Hi, welcome to Cafe General Store Redux. What do I mean by that? Over the years I've added a lot of build videos to my YouTube channel, but until recently they were primarily just photographs with music, and I was hoping to tell the story of how they were built just using the photographs. But recently with the ability to add narration, I've been told that it helps quite a bit. So I've decided to go back to a few of my more popular ones from the past and add narration to them. This one is the Caffey General Store, a kit by Blair Line. General stores were commonly found across the rural areas of America. Some of them still survive. General stores were once the hub of rural towns, where people came not just for provisions, but for gossip and treats. Here's what you get in the Blair Line kit. Your directions and some signs, and a number of pieces of laser cut wood that make up the walls, the flooring, and the roofing. Now I first started on the floor piece, cutting V grooves into the front and back porches so that they looked like boards. Then I'd remove the material that I had cut out of the notch. And this gave the look of boards on both the front and the back porch. Next, I glued the two front walls together and clamped them. Then I cut the ends off of the back walls so that I'd have a place where I could put some corner trim in. The next thing I started doing was cutting out some of the boards in the back section of the store. I wanted this section to look like it was falling apart and removing some of the boards and adding some grain to the wood helped with that effect. I glued in a couple pieces of strip wood behind the walls to look like framing. Then after test fitting the walls to see how they looked, I applied murky brown to the lower portion of the walls and then went over the entire wall with hunter line medium brown. I then put some hunter line driftwood on the inside of the walls and I had gone over the outside of the walls with a ponce wheel to put in some nail holes and I then used an AK weathering pencil to put some rust along the lines of nail holes. I then used a watercolor pencil to put some red shading on the window and door and trim and then went over that with a blue-gray stain, which made it look like it had been painted, but was fading. I then glued the door and windows and trim into the back walls and did a test fit of them against the already distressed back wall of the main building to see how it looked. Now it was time to brace the side walls. I want to point out that since they were bored and batten, I brace them horizontally because that's the way the wood will warp when it gets painted or stained. At that point I test fit all of my walls onto the base to see how they'd fit and how the corner trim fit. Then I painted my side walls. I used a craft style chalky white paint that gave me the faded look of white paint on the walls that I wanted and I used that on all four walls of the main building. Then I cut some strip wood and covered the window and door on the back wall and stained it with a grige which made it look like it was more recent wood. I wanted this building to have this sort of abandoned look. At this point all of my walls were painted and I wanted to start doing some additional work on them. I put a patch on the corner of one of the side walls as if it needed to be covered. And then I put some broken glass into the windows in the back room wall. Next I started coloring all the rest of the window and door trim. And I did it the same way using a watercolor pencil. I really like these things and how you can control how much color you get on the wood. 
And then I also went over that with the stain, which darkens it and makes it look older. I also started to stain the random boards that were on the front and back porch of my building. And then after gluing the windows and doors into the front wall, I started to cover them with randomly sized pieces of strip wood. This would give the look of a building that had been closed for a while. I cut the pieces to random size and also did a variation of staining on them. And then I put together the screen doors using some fabric that I had for the screens. I added a door to the back wall that would end up being on the inside of the back room that you could see through the windows. I glued the screen doors on as if they were partially open and somewhat broken. Then it was time to work on the signs. Some of the ones were ones that came in the kit and some of them were ones that I downloaded from the internet. After I cut them all out, I used a variety of methods for rusting them. In some cases I'd use AK watercolor pencils or an oil brusher. And in other cases I'd use craft paints and use a sponge method to put the rust on. Then when it came to the large Coca-Cola sign on the back, I used oil brushers again. Then I attached all of the signs to the walls and started to glue the walls together. I used clamps to hold the walls in place while they were all drying. I had found it easier to attach the signs to the walls while they were all flat. It made it easier to glue them in place and to have rust dripping down from underneath the signs. Then I attached the roof that I had already made onto the back room and put some rafter tails in place underneath it. Now I started working on the sign that would go over the front porch. I had downloaded it from the internet and weathered it some. I would put in all the posts and the roof braces the way the instructions say to. And I wanted the sign to look as if it was collapsing, so I cut it in half. Half of it was going to be propped up the way it was supposed to be, and the other half will be falling down. I put the roofing onto the porch, and then attached the sign. I had also put on all of the trim on the front of the building, again following the instructions for that. Next it was time to work on the roofing for the main building. The kit came with rolled roofing, but I wanted a metal roof, so I used some Motrac model standing seam metal roofing. And I first started with a variety of rust colors and used a sponge to get a rusting effect onto the metal roofing. And then I used some artist pigments to blend them all together. And it gave me a pretty good look for a rusted roof. Then I attached the roofing onto the main building. I decided to put a patch in one spot and again I used an Ammo by MIG oil brusher to rust it but not as badly as the other pieces. And I still needed to put the chimney in place. So I had painted it a brick red and then used a little vinyl spackling to put the mortar in place. Then I glued the chimney into the hole in the roof. And I went over the rest of the kit with some more artist pigments, just blending all of the weathering together. I like working with artist pigments. You have a lot of control over how much you apply, and they blend together very nicely. After adding some foliage, 
Then I was done with the construction. I put it on a small diorama flat that I have and took it outside to take some photographs of it. Then ultimately it ended up being on my layout. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time.